What is happening? Poo, poo, motherfucking, oh, undefeated. Let's get it versus the Sacramento Kings. Now, the Sacramento Kings, I low-key think they're, they're like a sleeper for this year. They're, I, I got them at least making in the play in, in for this this year. They have a decent amount of talent. They got De'Aaron, Sabonis, and they got the rookie Keegan Murray. They got Terrence Davis. They got Kevin Herter, which is... That boy was lighting it up this game, like, and especially in the first quarter, man. Dude was just like, damn, this dude was just swishing it, like, that was crazy, pretty crazy. But overall, the whole entire game, it was a good fight, and this Clippers team was much better than last last game Clippers team versus the Lakers. Let's be real, if we played like how we played last game. We'd get smacked. I'm not gonna lie to you, cause, like, yeah, we still had some turnovers, but it was not a damn twenty turnover game. Like, like we still had a lot of sloppy moments. Like we had a lot of sloppy Joes, especially Paul George, Reggie Jackson, Norman Powell. But it was just much better. It was just much better than than the last than the you know the last game, but. Anyways, that's just a whole a brief summary. Like that's all I gotta say. It was a fairly close game. It was not never a blowout. Like the most, it was like just like I say, like twelve point lead. But other than that, it was it was a close game. It was a pretty entertaining game. And shout out to the Kings for putting up a fight. You know, I mean, there I got them obviously being better than. The Los Angeles Lakers, if I'm being completely honest with you, because the Kings, they actually have some heart. They have some young talent, while the Lakers, they just have LeBron and AD, and then that's pretty much it. Like, but time to go player by player. De'Aaron Fox. De'Aaron Fox, shout out to De'Aaron. Like, that boy scored, I want to say, 36 points, which is, that, boy, that dude was... You know, he was being quick with it. He was driving to the basket, getting all the layups. And his defense low-key improved because I heard supposedly people say De'Aaron Fox is a bad defender or something like that, which is, in this game, I don't think he really showed that he was a bad defender. He got some, he kind of like tried to, you know, guard PG at times, but of course, Paul George was just Paul George. But nevertheless, it was a pretty good game by De'Aaron Fox, and like, till this day, people will question, should they have traded De'Aaron, or should they have traded Halliburton? That is a, that is still to still to be solved within years, because Halliburton, he's just a, kind of like a walking semi-triple-double. Like, he doesn't officially get the triple-double, but he gets the doms, and he gets the rebound, while De'Aaron's more of a score-first, playmate type guard. So, we'll see who wins the... Like, was it worth it to trade Halliburton for Sabonis? But, anyways, Kevin Herter, like I said, he was lighting it. He was lighting that bad boy, bro. Shooting it, he was just swishing it, swishing it, swishing it. Like, that dude just hard to contain for this game. And then, DeMontis Sabonis. DeMontis Sabonis, he started off pretty strong. He was making some mid-range. He did air, air ball a three-pointer, but then second half he went cold. He did have some baskets against Zubak, but, you know, Zubak did. He held his own against Sabonis. Like, shout-out to Big Zoo. But, and his rebounding was, you know, fairly decent, but he is he is a pretty skilled big man. He It's pretty impressive that for his size he could dribble across the whole entire basketball court like, Somewhat like a typical guard, which is, you know, like a lot of people did with question the Halliburton trade. I think it's it's pretty, I don't know how to really properly say it. I, I feel like it's one of those win-win types of trades because, you know, Halliburton and De'Aaron, they're both kind of like a point guard type. And, you know, he's flourishing with Indiana while 
you know, the Kings, they got Savonis, which is a really skilled big man, you know, who's who could grab boards and kind of occasionally space the floor, but he didn't space the floor this game, but he tried, but he, he missed, but it could, it could be a really decent win-win. And then KZ Akpala, Akpala, he, he is just like, you know, like an average role player in this game. And let's see who else could I, and then anybody else who was starting, let me try to help me out, help me out. Let's see. I'm just going to go to the people on the bench. Keegan Murray. Keegan Murray, he definitely showed that he's he's definitely going to be like their scoring glue guy type of power forward or small forward. Like a lot of people, including me, I was pretty skeptical on what were they doing when they passed their guys like Jaden Ivey and Shaden Sharp. But Keegan, he showed it. He's actually he actually could be a pretty good role player, but the thing you gotta factor is that man is twenty two years old, man. Like but you know, that's that's a pretty that's a pretty solid pickup. He's a he was a good scorer. He was scoring at all three levels too. Well, all two levels I should say, because he while he could shoot threes, he could just drive to the basket. I forgot exactly how much he had, but it was over twenty points and he got two blocks, which is shows that he's a potential Solid two-way player. Like, let me know what is your player comparison for Keegan Murray. Like, I'm trying to think of one. Because I kind of want to say like a Tobias Harris type. Like, at least when he was with with the Clippers. Because, remember, to- Clippers, Tobias Harris went hard. But, but I think that's just at the moment. But I think Keegan can slash better than Harris because Tobias is more of a just a pull-up shooter, but that's a good that's a good question to think of. And then they also got guys like Damon Mitchell. He he had a quiet night, just only four points four points in the game. Terrence Davis he was making shots in the first half, but then he went quiet. Malik Monk, the Lakers knew it. The Lakers, the Lakers wonder boy from last year. Malik Monk he had a quiet game as well too, but. Still, the Lakers just fumbled, but either way, like, Malik Monk, yeah, he was pretty quiet in the game, and then, but it was mainly Keegan and De'Aaron Fox, just, they were just the reason why they were in the game, like, and then Rashawn Holmes, like, he, he, he provided some momentum for them as well, too, but, you know, the Clippers just went, just kind of, like, took advantage of their interior like lack, the lack of interior defense, and we just scored through the basket with ease. But now, let's just enjoy the Clippers players. All right, Reggie Jackson, <laughs> better than last game. He actually made some shots, and his defense was kind of a little bit like a little bit shaky. Like he gets blown by, he gets blown by more than I would like to see, but. His threes were hitting, and his passing, it could be improved, but at the same time, it's respectable. Like, we did have some turnovers when we tried to feed Big Zoo. Like, that's one thing I liked, like, about, like, this Clipper season is we're actually, like, feeding Zubak more of the ball compared to last year. Because last year, Zubak would be open, and we would just go ISO and not feed Zubak at all. But this time... The more we feed Zubak, the more reliable he shows. Like people don't people sleep on Zubak just because he don't shoot threes and he's a bit more clumsier than you would want him to be. But but in my opinion, like you just have to put him in the right situation and and you know Teron Lu, he seems to be doing a good job about making sure Zubak gets put in the right situation. And but yeah, Reggie so he he kind of showed flashes of being Mr. June, especially like some of the shots he was just be jellying up the shots, which is you know a pretty good thing to see. And then Zubak, like I said, Zubak still did his thing. Like his stats wasn't as impressive, but he was honestly, in my opinion, the same Zubak from 
how he faced off against the Lakers. He was still bullying him down post. He had some nice, strong, like, monstrous dunk. It was not a flashy dunk, but it was a strong dunk. Like, that's another thing people don't really appreciate about Big Zubak. And Zubak, he's, he's a pretty darn strong dude. And that is something you don't have in the in the league. Like, lots of these bigs, they would they would tend to be taken advantage of. But Zubak, Zubak would just crush him. Like, it's like, I know some people, they want a stretch big, but... I mean, being a stretch big doesn't automatically warrant, like, uh, success, basically. Like, look at Carl Anthony Towns. Like, Carl Anthony Towns, he's too much of a stretch big that he is, he's, like, basically a 6'9 shooting guard, which is, like, it would get annoying for for some fans to deal with. So, now, they, they went up, they just traded a whole entire... Like, they shared a whole lot of first-rounders for Rudy Gobert, so, you know, like, careful what you wish for sometimes. But like, Zuba, yeah, obviously, it would be nice to see him shoot some threes, but, but in my opinion, like, Zuba don't need to shoot threes. Like, like I'm cool with him being this traditional big. Like, you just have to use him properly. Like, the way how he sets screens is pretty darn good, too. Like, it gives the teams... It gives some of the players, like, a wide-open look. And his playmaking is also pretty underrated, too. Like, yes, he did have that one that one turnover. But, like, it was actually, like, a pretty, like, kind of a bad turnover. Like, Zubak just passed the ball too prematurely. But, like, Norman Powell could have just tried to get, get to his spot and just get a wide-open three. But it was a premature pass by Zubak. But at the same time, like, his playmaking skill is a sleeper. Marcus Morris, Marcus Morris, you know, he actually did pretty solid as well, too. Like, this Morris is better than the Morris, like, from, I would want to say, like, a last year or, like, a two years ago. The first year of Morris, oh, man, it was ugly. He was just on and off, on and off. And if he gets 10 points, you will feel, oh, man. I'm so happy to see this, but this Morse, he's actually locked in. He's more quicker. He likes his mid range, and he's his shot. His shot selection is like a lot more smarter compared to last year or the first year in general. And you know, stats was double digit. I forgot the exact number, but nevertheless. He was definitely a positive on the floor. And PG-13. Wow. What a masterclass. 40 points. That man was cooking everybody who was in front of him. Like, BBQ chicken. Heck, I think think it's more than BBQ chicken. I think it's extra crispy Popeye's chicken. Like... Man, they were the Kings were trying to guard PG. I feel for them, man. Like they were literally getting deep fried by PG. Just mm 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 handles blick them. And some of these Clippers fans on social media who's who already gave up on PG, just man, hold that L, bro. Like you gotta support your players when they're when they're on their ups. And, and downs. You can't just be a Timothy or an Edgar. Just be being like entitled and spoiled. Just expect them to just be perfect. Like people have their ups and downs. It's just the way how the game of basketball works. You don't want to be like the Lakers fans who basically now they're treating Westbrook like garbage. Which is I don't even really like Russell Westbrook, but now. When I slander Westbrook, I feel guilty because now they're, the fans are just, the Lakers fans are just, you know, just treating treating their players like garbage when they're having a, a bad performance. Like, no, you got to support your players even when they're down. Like, like, you know, that's just, that's just the way how the game works. Now, let's get to the bench. Robert Covington. Robert Covington. He had some. He had one little dunk that was pretty impressive, and 
and basically his defense was pretty solid and like just basically, you know, a really good three and D three and D type player. Nevertheless, the the Norman Powell trade and the Roco trade, I really loved how we got Roco because I rocked him I rock with him since back when he was with, with Philly. Like you can't go wrong with a guy like Robert Covington. <clears throat> and then Luke Kennard. Luke. Another dude who came from a long way like man what like first I've just seen Luke Kennard as a really good shooter but now he improved all those all around in his game like he improved on his defense his playmaking and now he has a mid-range and he has a floater which is that is that is some huge improvement from Luke Kennard like like again which is pretty darn nice to see. Just that that little float. That float was just ooh, just a soft touch. And it just it sounds just like it just sounds like water. Straight up sounds like water. And then Nick Batum. Nick Batum, you know, just he made a three and made some solid impact as well too. Defense was was, you know, he stayed in front of his opponent, which is pretty, pretty solid. And basically, it was a really good game. Like, we we're undefeated. And then tomorrow, we got the Phoenix Suns. The Phoenix Suns themselves. Ooh, that's going to be a really good test tomorrow. And and I like the move how we just simply rest Kawhi Leonard and we rest John Wall too. Like, that's good that we're resting our players. and But, of course, there's always more improvement to see, especially, you know, the way how, like, we could try to, like, be less sloppy, especially when Paul George would make his pass. Like, try not to make it too sloppy. Like, I remember that one play, he tried to get Zubak a dunk, but he passed it, like, a little bit too high. Like, Zubak, he's not most of Diabate. He don't have the damn 40-inch reticle, but... But, but you know, but basically, like, but that's just a little nitpick, nitpicky type of critique for Paul George since he had a such marvelous game. And other guys like Terrence Mann, Terrence Mann, like I feel a lot, he's kind of getting flacked by the Clipper community, but you know he's he's still the Terrence Mann that that we remember him from. My opinion is just. Like, again, sometimes people expect them to just have a perfect game. But obviously, at the same time, though, it will be better if we get some different players in the rotation, too. Just got to split the pot sometimes. Like, and I'm, and I'm glad that we've seen some Amir Coffee runs. Like, Tehran Luke could still use a lot of work in terms of rotations. Just because, like, a lot of fans, they get a lot of false notions of we need this, we need that, when realizing that we actually, like, have the talent is just Ty Lue doesn't play him because the guy is a rookie, which is something that Teron Lue can work on. But nevertheless, like, I, I think Teron Lue is a pretty good coach. Like, as much as I, I get on Teron Lue, like, every video I make, he is a pretty good coach. And, and I just like I just like how he would call out the plays, something that the Clippers never really had. Like, Doc Rivers... He barely really called out the play, especially during that the the bubble collapse. Like Doug did not really like Doug does not really call plays. Well Teron Lou, he's always vocal. He be like he be barking, just trying to put them in the right situation. And the offense is just ooh, it is just pretty nice to see. And it's impressive that even when the Clippers so called did not have a true point guard, the ball movement was still pretty good under Teron Lucas, like, which is, which is actually pretty, like, I don't want to say impressive, because I, I use that word a lot, but it's just, it's just, you know, out of the ordinary to see that happen, but nevertheless, just let me know what you think about this win, like, this was, this Clippers team was much better than 
the last game, Clippers team. But just just let me know what you think about about the game. Just leave a comment down below, and I'll definitely get with y'all in the comment section. As y'all know, peace and let's beat the darn Phoenix Suns. Whew.